Greetings one and all, and welcome to Beyond the Walls, a global ministry of Center Place and Community of Christ in Canada. And welcome also to the disciples and friends gathered here within the consecrated space of our sanctuary. Just four weeks ago, we began our Lenten journey, though to me it feels like a much longer time has passed. Let's take a moment to take stock, to remember the road we've trod, to ponder the path ahead. Our journey began as Andrew Bolton joined us from England and asked, with the excited crowds assembling in Jerusalem for the Passover, who is this Jesus? Andrew told us about the Jesus who challenges the empire of Rome, and we experience the Jesus who challenges the forces of empire in our day, entrenched and unjust social, political, and economic systems, enforced by violence for the benefit of the few at the expense of the many. Next, Janae Grover, joining us from the sanctuary of the temple in Independence, shared the sacred story as Jesus enters the Jerusalem temple and overturns the tables of the money changers working in the service of the religious leaders of his day who claimed to hold a monopoly on the faith of the people. His actions caused the children in the temple, representing those marginalized by society, to sing out joyous hosannas. And Janae reminded us that the hosannas resound today when we embody Christ's mission in our communities. Linda Booth was with us as Jesus and the disciples shared the Last Supper as they celebrated the initiation of communion. We shared communion. We shared it as a global community. As Jesus said, this is my body. He took bread and as he blessed, broke, and gave, so we took bread. We blessed, broke, and gave. Eating the one bread, we together became the one body. Christ's body in the world. Last week, as we grieved together, Chandra Newcomb taught us to be vulnerable to Christ's grace. As she and I and the other ministers shared our vulnerabilities alongside Jesus at Gethsemane, she helped us see that this brought us together in new ways, ways that have the potential for new insights, new empathy, for healing, and ultimately for hope. In the past week, so many of you have reached out to me. I've been so moved, I've been so touched, I've been so heartened by all of your responses. You are my sacred family. You nurture me in time of need as we walk together on the journey. The path ahead is still filled with dark times and uncertainty. The sacred story of the passion next will take us to Jesus' execution, his suffering and death on the cross. But we will be blessed to have Mareva Arnaud here to guide us and take heart because the following week on Easter Sunday, Angela Ramirez will be here and present among us to share in our witness that Christ is alive and is ever present in our midst. We are assured of joyous times ahead 
as we live the sacred story today, though the journey may be bleak and feel bleak now. Today's story, Jesus is betrayed by one of the disciples. The others all abandon him and flee. And as Jesus predicts to Peter, even you will disown me. This is our theme as we experience the sacred story in the present. I invite you now to think of ways that we've sometimes fallen short of our covenant as Christians, as the whole body of Christ, as a church, and in our individual discipleship. Honest and authentic self-reflection will help us to develop further in our discipleship. Confessing our own mistakes will help us learn from them. It'll help us have empathy for others when they fall short. Finally, knowing that Jesus does not blame Peter for his human failings and indeed forgives all reminds us that God's grace is ever available to each of us always. And as we begin our service, we go now live to Pearland, Texas, where Rhonda Radliff is here to read our call to worship. Rhonda, welcome to Beyond the Walls. Good morning. Our call to worship looks back to a moment immediately following the Last Supper and before the prayer vigil at Gethsemane, when Jesus predicts that all of the disciples will fall away from him, including Peter. We read in Matthew 26, verse 31 through 35, that Jesus said to them, You will all fall away because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even if all fall away because of you, I will never fall away. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples, Amen. Keep your lamp trimmed and burning. Keep your lamp trimmed and burning. Keep your lamp trimmed and burning. For the work is nearly done. Children, don't grow weary. Children, don't grow weary. Children. Yeah. 
And from Texas, we go now to Escondido, California, where Steve Tigner is here to offer our invocation. Good morning, John, and good morning, congregation. It's a pleasure to be with you at this Lenten season. The past four years with COVID have been a revelation for me in my spiritual life. For all of my years in the church, I have been associated with a traditional congregation. That paradigm reached a grinding halt when the virus took over our lives. On the positive side, these recent years have provided ample opportunity to reflect on what were old habits and what are new opportunities to find Christ in our daily lives. The words in John 14 have helped me understand that we can express and ex experience the vibrant message of community of Christ in many new ways. Don't let this rattle you. You trust God, don't you? Trust me. There is plenty of room for you in my father's home. If that weren't so, would I have told you that I'm on my way to get a room ready for you? And if I'm on my way to get your room ready, I'll come back and get you so you can live where I live. And you already know the road I'm taking. During this journey, I have found a safe haven in the Beyond the Walls congregation that includes so much diversity, acceptance, unique messaging, and most importantly, love. In my local religious life, I meet with friends monthly for communion. We meet outside of walls and have our gathering at a local beach. Yes, it is a unique experience. Yes, the church has left the building. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Lenten journey continues with you as we approach the joy and love represented by Easter in just two weeks. We come to you at this time to acknowledge your presence in all of our lives. We worship you from so many settings, from so many locations, from so many cultures, and with such a diversity of needs. Yet through all this, you share the abundant love that each of us needs to receive from you. This love is shared even in those times that we deny you, as Peter did. How great and patient you are. Please bless all those who attend and participate in this service today. Please open our hearts and minds to be attuned to your will in our lives as we continue the journey to Easter. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. California, we return to Toronto Center Place where our associate pastor, Roger Dodson, will teach today's lesson of the Living Church. We sometimes may question the reason of why certain things and events take place. The sale of some of the places and items important to the history of our church has had a great sense of loss for many of our members of the church. The deep emotions that have been felt is because of the love and connectedness and the spiritual experiences that have been shared and witnessed over the many years. Well, I was thinking and digesting the recent event and news of the sale of the Kirkland Temple. What came to me during the night was a passage from John 14, verses 2 and 3. And this very same scripture that came to Steve that he shared before in the invocation. And it's, in my father's house are many mansions. 
If it were not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. When the way finishes here, the door will be open from the other side. Since this is a father's house, this is a home going. Rather than going into some strange and fearsome place where one would feel ill at ease. God has provided us with a spiritual home when we are finished and leave our earthly home. But when it says, in my Father's house are many mansions, I also believe that there are many mansions that God has provided for us in the here and now on earth. And they are found in countries, cities, towns, and villages made up of people with different backgrounds and cultures. God has provided in the here and now a global community. Community of Christ beyond the walls in which we have become a global church family, where we become a spiritual home for so many here on earth that have met the needs for so many. The ministry that is being provided from beyond the walls has been such a blessing for so many people that has changed their lives. I strongly believe the reason why beyond the walls have been successful is because of the leadership team and all those who dedicate themselves each week to make this possible. It is because of the genuine love and caring for those who gather with us each week. Leandro touched on this in a sermon he gave a while back when he stated that no matter who you are, man or woman, gay or heterosexual, or what skin color, or what ethnic background, you are welcome in Christ's church. I have found when you're doing the Lord's work, there'll be times when there'll be things put in your path to try to make you stumble and to discourage you. When I was at the Canada Christian College and would leave at night to go home, there would be often be something that tried to discourage me to bring me down. I finally got to a place where I said, get ye behind me, Satan. My Lord is much greater than you. From then on, when things happen, I just say those words. Let us not be discouraged, but trust in the living God, and he will direct your paths. In Matthew 7, 24, it says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his church upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon the house, and it fell not, for it was upon a rock. What does it mean when it says that we are living stones that built the church? The church is us, each individual. That is, each of you here today is a living stone. When you trust in the living cornerstone, which is Jesus Christ, when we come together with all of our individual uniqueness, as we are doing today, we build together a spiritual home, a spiritual house where God dwells among us. May the outpouring of God's love continue to bless you as we continue to strive 
to do his work here on earth is my prayer for you. Amen. Right. Well, we're coming back to Toronto now, and uh, thank you folks for finding your way back to the service. And I have to apologize to you because we're having some interesting technical issues here at Center Place today because uh, we had one of, one of the equipments that we have here has stopped working, but we'll, we'll get there. But so it's good to see you all here. This is uh, this is the point where I say welcome and thank you for your ministry. So we have a lot of people here, so I'm, I'm just going to say that we have Mike and John and Art and Johan and Carol Marie and, and we have Roger and hello Joyce and Melanie. I don't know your names, folk, I think, but welcome. It's glad you're here. And we have uh, Chris and Gordon and Daniel. Thanks, everyone. And I think we have Mark and Faith somewhere hiding out there. I'm going to also welcome those of you who have said 
Hello Building Community on Facebook. Uh, we're back on Facebook and YouTube. So thanks for waiting for us. Welcome uh, to our team, Mary Jean, Jeannie and Lee today helping us keep the thing running as we're just having all these glitches here. Welcome to Lavera Wade Myrna and Bob Logan, Adam Euchre, Julie Trudel, uh, Norio and Kathy Morota, Don and Sue uh, uh, Wiley, Holly Cross, Bonnie and Ken Avery, Richard and Linda Wiley, Pam Luce, Karen Smith, Dennis and Mary Lou, Peter Gerdes, Mary and Baba, Jeannie uh, Kuhn, uh, Dick and Julie Foster, Donna Barber, Aaron Hart, Bonnie Bailey, Adrian Lucy, John and Maloney with Jean and Maloney. Welcome David Hinkle, Graham Barcy, Eric and Jacqueline Ashbog, Tego Boko, Dave and Bonnie Simmons, Bob Cipioni, Ron Rains. Welcome also to Jeff Koontz, Becky Savage, and Gould, James Carson, Katie Mueller, James, did I say James Carson? Oh, it's great, great that you can join us again, James. Uh, blessings to you. Katie Mueller, I said also Jamie Carson Cantrell, Kurt with us also Sam Wolf today in Riyadh. It's uh, Ramadan Mubarak for you. Ernesto Borges Torres, uh, also Jeannie Kuhn is with Sally, Keith, Lisa, Ashley, Lucia, and Ava. Welcome Wendy Robson, Noel Gafka, Nicola, Julie Edwards, B, uh, Beth Beecroft, Lorna Webster, Larry Laporte, Caleb Rogers, Brenda Barney, uh, and happy birthday to your grandson. Welcome to Esteban Lopez. Welcome Rex Smith, Ruth Armstrong, Ray uh, Ortiz. Uh, some of the folks who join us on on our lectures, uh, we have Corey T. Uh, I'm not sure K one eight what your name is, but welcome. And I'm going to stop there. So thank you for joining us today, and thanks everyone for your patience today as we continue to figure out these glitches we're having here. But it's such a blessing to know that you're there, and remember to click like and to share this video so that we can continue to share, to continue to uh, draw the circle wide today. So thank you. And, um, and so we already have our hymn. So now we're gonna just get ready for our sermon. Oh, and first we're gonna have to go to our lectionary reading with uh, our friend, Michael. We go now live to Shawnee, Oklahoma, where Michael Stearman is here to read today's lectionary scripture. Welcome, Michael. We read in Matthew chapter 26, verses 69 through 75. Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A female servant came to him and said, you, you also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he went out to the porch, another female servant saw him, and she said to bystanders, This man was with Jesus the Nazarene. Again he denied with an oath, I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse, and he swore an oath, I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Amen. And from Oklahoma, we head back to Toronto Center Place, where our Apostle Art Smith is here to preach today's message. Good day, friends. Blessings to all from the Community of Christ Council of Twelve and my colleagues in World Church Leadership. Thanks to Beyond the Walls for the unique opportunity to hear from several current and former Community of Christ Apostles this Lenten season. And thanks as well for the gift of delving deeper into the Easter saga through this series. I wanna share some greetings with you from Community of Christ members and leaders in various places I serve. 
First greetings from Haiti. I ask for your prayers for this beautiful country and its people. Some in the wealthy Americas tire of hearing about Haiti's needs, but the current political and social situation is impacting Haitians in dreadful and probably unprecedented ways. Gang rule has led to fear and chaos. Many people have been forced from their homes, including one of our national ministers who lost everything he had. Some of our schools and churches have had to close. Unrest in the agricultural areas of Haiti is leading to food insecurity and famine. Refugees have fled to other parts of the country, and those who are able have left the country altogether seeking safety in foreign lands. Nobody wants to leave their homeland, you know. I'm grateful for Community of Christ congregations in Mexico and the United States of America that have opened their doors and hearts to Haitian refugees and asylum seekers. Please know that these people are not arriving at our doorsteps just for fun. The situation is truly desperate. And now more than ever, we must live out our enduring principles of worth of all persons, pursuit of peace, and blessings of community, as well as our mission initiatives that call us to similarly pursue peace and to abolish poverty. These principles and initiatives not to mention our scriptures, demand that we welcome the foreigner as never before in our lifetimes. We must see beyond the dividing walls of the world, resisting the temptation to see people from other countries as other, or as categorically different from ourselves, beyond the way we are family in community of Christ, we are all God's children. Please show compassion. When given the chance, as you encounter people personally, those seeking help who literally make their way to your doorstep, may we also be compassionate in our prayers, in our conversations with others, and in our study of public policy for those who are able in political engagement and voting. This moment in history requires of us not only interpersonal compassion, but also support for good policies that reflect our principles and mission. I also want to bring greetings from Community of Christ in India, from where I've just returned. Like Haiti, Community of Christ has been established in India for more than 50 years. I've been assigned to India as the field apostle since April of 2023. And it's been amazing to visit urban and village churches established in the days of Charles Neff. If you don't know about Apostle Neff's humanitarian and outreach work, I recommend reading Matthew Bolton's book, Apostle of the Poor. Community of Christ has seven mission centers in India and tens of thousands of members. Over these last few days, they've held their seven mission center conferences. It's an exciting and challenging time for the church in India. Christians there represent a small minority of the population and are particularly vulnerable in an era of ascending Hindu nationalism. Interestingly, in that already challenging context, Community of Christ in India is doing the daring work of reinventing itself. The church there is grappling with new understandings of what it even means to be community of Christ. In the early years of our church in India, the focus was on community development. In terms of church structure, most of our congregations maintained a familiar to them Canadian Baptist system that they'd known before joining community of Christ. In the last 10 years, congregations are adopting the community of Christ, priesthood structure, sacraments, shared leadership models, common consent practices, financial transparency, and democratic decision making. Additionally, and excitingly, less than two weeks ago, 
I had the privilege of ordaining the first ever woman to hold priesthood, a priesthood office in the Kui and Sora tribal villages, where Charles Neff established the church 50 years ago. In total, six women were ordained, including the first elder, and more calls for women are in process. So while the church in Canada and the USA has been grappling with other issues these last couple of weeks, on the other side of the world, this is a little bit of what's been happening. The context is so different, but people in India love community of Christ. They are aware of some of your struggles, and they are praying for you. I also want to thank the Beyond the Walls community for your prayers and support during this time of loss. It feels like so many pillars of the church have gone recently. Personally, I want to say that the loss of Dar Shepherdson, as our beloved Bishop of Canada, has in no way been overshadowed by any other events in the church. Thank you to those who continue to pray for Dar's wife, Sherry, and for his whole family. Well, now I've spent quite a lot of time on greetings from the church in different parts of the world. But what I want to share with you this morning is that these things, in a very real way, are at the heart of today's message and at the center of what Jesus is all about. Breaking down the walls between people, creating a new human family without separation was his mission. In the end, it's what got him into trouble. Reinforcing our connections with each other, especially across ethnic, class, racial, gender, and social divides, isn't just preamble today's script to today's scripture story and theme. This is the theme of Jesus's ministry described in slightly different ways in all four gospels. This mission builds community on the rubble of a disrupted status quo. Matthew's gospel, written as a narrative poem on this disruptive mission, includes today's betrayal text. I love the way the author frames today's story with this boundary-busting reordering of things and recentering of the vulnerable on the vulnerable and on love itself. We see this in the very beginning of this gospel where the genealogy of Jesus imagines Jesus as descended from scandalous women and foreigners. The first people to recognize Jesus' significance in this clever telling of the story are magi, foreigners from another land. And as the narrative progresses, Jesus is criticized for eating and drinking and generally spending way too much time with sinners. He reinterprets scripture, upending traditional understandings of things with his, you have heard it said, but I tell you, Matthew portrays Jesus as a kind of new Moses, one who tries to refocus things on the liberating, compassionate foundation of the law. Jesus tests their traditional faith, challenging the things that they clung to, took for granted, and assumed were important. If our faith is living from time to time, that faith is put to the test. Not by some white-haired god sitting up in the clouds, pulling strings, or tossing lightning bolts. Living together in community is enough to provide these challenges. The best, most productive faith challenges remind us about what matters most. Our egos are weakened. Hopefully, we're drawn back toward love as the true center of our faith. At this point in the scripture story, it's not at all clear that love is going to win. Jesus's brash, anti-establishment behavior may have been received by people on the margins as loving and uplifting, 
But now those in power, those invested in the status quo, have had enough. The disciples have heard the grumbling of the religious leaders for a long time, but now those with the real power, the Romans, are involved. And Jesus has been arrested, leaving the disciples trying to wrap their heads around what might happen next. Matthew 26, 69 to 75 is screen number two of a split-screen story. Jesus and Peter are both at the house of Caiaphas, the high priest. Jesus is being interviewed by the high priest in the inner part of the house, or maybe upstairs. Peter is in the public courtyard, either in front of the house or downstairs. Caiaphas is going to accuse Jesus of blasphemy for speaking against God, and in the end, he'll be so offended that he'll tear his clothing. Peter's going to end up broken hearted, his heart torn just like Caiaphas's garment. Don't be too hard on Peter. He's actually showing quite a bit of courage in following Jesus all the way to Caiaphas's house. Although if he truly understood how much trouble Jesus is in, he might not have followed so closely. On the surface, the story is all about Peter's weakness. Peter denies Jesus. But for Matthew, Peter's sin isn't just some abstract offense, a denial of Jesus. The poetry of this story draws us back one more time into who this Jesus is. Peter's offense isn't some cosmic offense against the God of the universe. This story reminds us what Jesus is all about. In Matthew's world, everyone believes in God or gods. The question was, what kind of God do you believe in? For Matthew, it was the God of those on the margins. It was the God who broke down barriers between people, reinterpreting the law so that it was good for the people, for everyone, but especially for the lowly. So in Matthew's gospel, Peter loiters in the lobby of Caiaphas' house, and as Jesus is interrogating, interrogated by the high priest, Peter will be interrogated by servant girls. This story is all about perceived power and socially understood levels. This is all the stuff that Jesus comes to overturn like so many tables in the temple. While Jesus is standing up to the high priest with integrity, Peter is lying to servant girls. He lies once. He lies again. And this time, taking an oath. The clear message is that these people he's talking with do not matter. In the ancient world, a person's word was supposed to mean something, much more so when combined with an oath. But lying to the servant girl, Peter is showing that she didn't matter to him. The icing on the cake is when a bystander who's been listening to the whole thing comes in from the street to call Peter out. Peter's accent had betrayed him. You're obviously with the Galilean. Just listen to how you talk. In the hierarchy of things, in this part of the ancient world, all the Jews were looked down upon by the Romans. But within the Jewish world, the Judeans Jerusalem folks knew that they occupied a higher place in the social order than those from the Galilean province, much less those from remote rural towns like Nazareth. So in our split screen story, the ones speaking the truth appear to be the ones without power. Jesus speaks the truth to Caiaphas. The servant girl speaks the truth to Peter the man. The bystander causes us to question all these assumptions about power, reminding us that they're all just a bunch of undesirables from Galilee. As Nathaniel would say over in the first chapter of John, how could anything good come out of Nazareth? Friends, hopefully this story makes us think. But be careful with these scriptures. It's tempting to treat this as an old trope about denying Jesus, apart from the specifics of what Jesus stood for. 
We can't just substitute whatever we want for what this means. Honestly, in my travels, I've heard people refer to all manner of things as supposedly being tantamount to denying Jesus. Many of these alleged denials amount to the exact kind of behaviors that Jesus is known for. Spending too much time with people on the margins, getting too involved with politics, not knowing your place. The story of the betrayal of Jesus isn't about some personal insult towards Jesus. The pow- its power isn't just an abstract denial. What matters to Jesus is overturning the hurtful social castes of the world that keep people imprisoned. When do we deny Jesus? When we come face to face with someone of a different social caste and we deny their equality, their humanity, and confirm their status as other. It's when we use our privilege to behave however we want towards those on the margins. When we don't question the status quo, we don't welcome the foreigner, we don't eat and drink with them as Jesus does. When we sit comfortably in our own class or caste, when we look the other way faced with the situation in Haiti or the Haitian asylum seeker at our border or who shows up at our church. This story came to life for me last week as I visited the Sora and Kui villages in India for the first time. All sorts of social scripts immediately kick in For them, it's about how they welcome a foreign visitor. For me, it's about how I speak and respond to them. What do I say and what do I do so as not to disrespect the village person or the local leader sharing with me? How can we build authentic relationships? Last week in India, one week ago Friday, we visited the Antarba congregation in Odisha. This congregation goes way back to the days of Charles Neff. The entire village is Community of Christ. And they've been working on building a beautiful church building for the last 25 years. They hope to dedicate it this year. It was a powerful experience walking up to that awesome three-story building. Built through the sacrifice and dedication of people over years. This was Sambra Raika's congregation. He was one of the two great evangelists from the history of the church in India. He was so loved that when he died a few years ago, he was buried in the nearby Community of Christ Cemetery with a grave marker just a little nicer than most of the rest. But that wouldn't be enough. The village raised the money to commission a statue in his likeness that now stands at the entrance to the church property. And on Friday at the Chandragiri Mission Center Conference, Sambra's daughter, Daina Raika, was ordained as the first woman elder in the history of the Sora and Kui tribes. She's the coordinator of all the women's leaders in her mission center, but when we asked local leaders if they thought she could potentially serve as pastor, we were cautioned that she is not educated. Friends, today's scripture invites us to think about levels and power, about who's inside and outside, and about who and what are most important. We deny Jesus when we cling to the status quo and the established levels and norms of the world or of our faith. What would Jesus do with an illiterate villager with obvious leadership potential? Perhaps invite her to put down her nets and to come and follow him. Surely Jesus would have more in mind for her than we would first imagine. I went to India with a set of expectations, I confess. I imagined that the tribal areas uh, would present bad roads and simple people of little means. In Antarba, the same week that the Kirtland Temple changed owners. Although I agree with my friend Carol Kaplinger, who says that nobody can really own the Kirtland Temple. But in that same week, I was introduced to this magnificent three-story church built over 25 years by the sacrifice of the saints. But for me, in my torn open heart, 
It's already settled into a spot that the Kirtland Temple once occupied. It's not in the USA. It's in India. It's on tribal land, so in a way it's not even owned by the church. It's not a building from my cherished past. Its story remains to be written. Somehow, as much as it pains me, I think Jesus would be pleased by the reversals and the upending of my ego, my assumptions, and my status quo of these last few days. I like to hope that in Community of Christ, when we manage to think of ourselves as global family, and when we take the time not just to hold cheap stereotypes of people in other countries or ethnicities, but to really form relationships of honor and respect, that we're in line with the kind of upending of things that Jesus had in mind. Thank you, Art. And now we stay here in Toronto for just a moment of meditation. And um, it is our tradition here on Beyond the Walls to close our worship service with a rousing and, or an uplifting hymn. But this is a very uh, unusual day with all these uh, just different technical challenges. So today, our closing hymn is going to be a heartfelt confession. Okay, so I'm just gonna find my singing bowl here, and I'm gonna invite you to be mindful of the words of the hymn that we're about to, to sing. That's uh, For those of you who cannot watch the screen, it's 461. And Really let the words resonate with you. Let us all allow the words to resonate with us as, as we continue to walk this difficult path that we call the Lonesome Valley as we go through this season of Lent. So these words seem dark at first because they sing of guilt, loss, and grief. Yet they also remind us of God's grace so whether or not we think we deserve it, God never ceases to be our light, our strength, our refuge, our comforter. So breathe in and out and make yourself vulnerable to the power of the Spirit in this moment. Continue breathing and just start to relax the body. As you breathe in and out, also bring your awareness to the present moment. Just let go of thinking what's going to happen next or what happened before. Breathe in and out. And once again, make yourself vulnerable to the power of the Spirit. Breathe in and out. It is my treason that has undone you. And breathe in And out, I, it was, denied you. And breathe in and out, I crucified you. 
and breathe in and out. For me was your incarnation. And breathe in and out for my salvation. And breathe in and out your pity and your love unswerving. And breathe in and out not my deserving. Just breathe at your own pace now. And continue to be mindful of the words as we sing together our closing hymn, Ah Holy Jesus. thank everyone who has joined with us within the walls and beyond the walls and I want to thank the amazing dedication and skills of our technology team, our congregational engagement team, uh, the loss of one of our pieces of equipment shorting out did not stop this ministry going forward and it is because of team members spread all around the world and also here with us. As we conclude, 
Let us hear again the words of John 14, 1 through 3, which Steve read from the Word version of the Bible and which Roger read from the Inspired version, and which I will now read in the New Revised Standard version of the Bible. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have, not, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. The Lord has prepared many dwelling places for us to inhabit in the house of the heavenly parent, which is not confined to any single location, however sacred, but extends throughout the world in the hearts and the commitment of disciples and seekers who collectively form the body of Christ. Amen. have run long because of difficulties that we had, so I think we won't have a discussion here with the disciples after. What do you think? Are you, unless you're thinking otherwise. Yeah, <laughs> because of the technical issues as well. However, if you are here in the late edition service, if you're here in the regular edition service and you want to come again for the late edition, it will be edited together. It's and possible that some of the ministers will be joining live. And some of the ministers will be joining their live. And so you, I invite you uh, five hours from now to join us again for late edition. And if you're already here with us in late edition, I invite you to stay with Noelle where she will be talking to a special guest. And so that will be very wonderful. And if you are here within the walls of the sanctuary, I invite you to stay for fellowship and snacks. God be with all of you. Thank you so much for being with us this day. <music>